G'day everyone. Today we're going to have a look at starter motors. We're going to talk about what they do, how they work, and all the parts that make them up. So let's get started. Now, of course, the primary use of the starter motor is to start a gasoline or a diesel engine. This one here is from a single cylinder gasoline engine, and this one here is from a multi-cylinder, very large diesel engine. It's much bigger because turning over a diesel engine is much harder to do than a petrol engine because of the higher compression ratios. We use battery power from the batteries to turn the starter motor. Now, these can reach up to about 300 RPM, and usually that's enough to start the engine. It doesn't matter the size of the starter motor. It's how you use it. No, it's not. It doesn't matter the size of the starter motor. They are all the same inside. They have all the same components in order to work. We have a solenoid here, which has hold-in and pull-in windings. We have a pinion here to drive the flywheel. We have a mounting surface. Of course, the starter motor has to be stationary on the engine and mounted in a fairly strong fashion because there's a lot of torque going through it. We have an armature inside here or a rotor that turns. We have a commutator with brushes at this end here. And of course, we have field windings on the outside to create a magnetic field and turn the starter motor. So let's get the starter motor apart and have a look at all these parts and see how they work together. So the starter motor uses a lot of current to turn an engine. We're using direct battery voltage through the starter motor and back to earth. Now we need to control it with a key or a switch and it wouldn't be very practical to have a key operating full battery voltage in very large gauge cable. So that's what the solenoid does. We control the solenoid through a very small amount of voltage from the key on the ignition and we use it to close the circuit and allow a large amount of battery voltage to travel from this side here to this side and through into the body of the starter motor. We use pull-in windings and hold-in windings. The windings we use to pull in, we turn the ignition on, it energizes those windings and it pulls the solenoid against these two contacts. Once the pull-in windings have activated, the hold-in windings then turn on and the pull-in windings turn off. The hold-in windings use a little bit less current and they can hold the solenoid in against the spring. The reason for that is we want the maximum amount of current to operate the starter motor. So the pull-in windings use more, the hold-in windings use less current, and therefore we have more available to operate the starter motor. This one here, if we bypass the solenoid and we use direct current from a battery that we earth against the body of the starter motor, we should be able to turn the starter motor over. Okay, here's how it all works. We have our little starter motor set up here with a negative and positive battery post. The positive is going to the top of the solenoid here, and the negative is going to the earth. This one earths through where it mounts. This particular one actually has an earth post that'll go to the battery and to the chassis as well. The solenoid has the hold-in and pull-in windings, and when we add a very small amount of current here from the ignition key, the pull-in windings will close this and allow current to travel from this side to this side, activating the starter motor itself. We're using a very small amount of current here, and we're controlling a large amount of current to get the starter motor to turn. The gear itself, the pinion, is hidden behind this shroud, but when it starts to turn, it'll actually throw out into the flywheel, and when we turn the starter motor off, it will retract out of the way. So let's simulate putting a small amount of current from the ignition key into this wire here and see if it starts this starter motor. Now we saw that pinion throw out using centrifugal force to drive the flywheel, and that's pretty common. A lot of these bigger ones will also use a linkage. Now the linkage is designed that when the solenoid is pulled in, it will push the pinion into the flywheel to drive the engine, and when you turn the starter motor off, when it retracts, it'll actually pull the pinion back out. It's a much more reliable way to move a very heavy pinion on a large engine that this starter motor would be designed to start. There's also a lot of protections in place electronically nowadays where if the engine speed reaches 300 RPM, it will automatically pull the starter motor because obviously the engine has started. It will also not allow you to use the starter motor if engine speed is above zero RPM. All right, we've got the starter motor all in bits. This is the big, heavy diesel engine starter motor. Starting at this end here, we have the linkage we spoke about earlier, and that will throw the pinion out into the flywheel housing when the solenoid is actuated, and it'll also retract it as well. This particular one has a planetary reduction set to give us more torque 
but less RPM. But of course, it's all about torque with these diesel engines and that planetary reduction will give us plenty of torque. The sun gear of that planetary reduction is part of the armature. You can see the armature sitting in here and that is between the field windings in the housing. The field windings stay still, they are part of the housing and they are electrified to give us a magnetic current. And we have a commutator here, which is part of the armature and that allows us to put electric current through these brushes into the armature to also create an alternating magnetic field to allow us to turn the starter motor. And of course we have the solenoid itself. Now that has an end on it here for the linkage to open and close that pinion and it is a very heavy solenoid. The spring in here is very heavy and the pull-in and hold-in windings are very strong to overcome that. Of course once we connect the two, power is going to travel from this side to this side and into the motor through this one here. So our positive goes in here and our earth is here. So that's pretty much it. That is everything I know about electric starter motors. You do get air starter motors nowadays and some hybrid vehicles have much more advanced starter motors that use the hybrid system to start the engine. But that is pretty much the same with every starter motor you'll find. You can pull them apart, you can clean them, make sure the brushes are working on the commutator, check for continuity along the commutator. There's a few things we can do to repair them, but for the most part, if it's damaged or not working, it's always gonna be easier just to replace with new nowadays. It's unfortunate, but pulling them apart, unless they're this size, isn't really that economical. Other than that, thank you very much for watching.